Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. We do have a quorum. I'd like to call this meeting of the Cunningham Town Board to order for Monday, January 11th, 2021. Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Mr. Sachs? Here. Ms. Hersey? Here. Mr. Brown? Mr. Roberts? Mr. Colebrook? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mayor Marlin? Here. Ms. Shenoweth? Present. Mr. Williams? Here. Next up, our approval of minutes from several previous meetings, the December 14th, 2020 meeting, a public hearing on that same day, and a special meeting on December 21st, 2020. Is there a motion? In the motion to approve those minutes. I'll second it. Moved by Jared, seconded by Bill Colebrook. Any corrections? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Mr. Colebrook? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. That motion passes. Are there any additions to the agenda? No? Okay. Public participation. Does anyone wish to address the Cunningham Town Board? Okay. I'm seeing no hands raised. Um, next item on the committee or on the agenda is the committee to verify bills. Danielle? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so <clears throat> this past month in the town fund, we had uh, $31,058.21 in expenditures in the general assistance fund we had eighty five thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars and twenty one cents in expenditures uh the total that that comes to is one sixteen thousand six hundred dollars and forty two cents in expenditures i would just note our general assistance participants are slightly down we're at 125 down from 136 um uh we did have uh we have about uh, 52 are currently homeless, so we're hovering usually around 40% or so. Um, quite a few more men than women, um, and the average age is slightly lower than uh, because we have you know, more, more folks who have been working who are out of work. We did keep the community work program closed in December due to the COVID transmission rates. Um, we did only have one rental assistance. Uh, um, uh, Help last month down from seven the month before. We're actually planning on doing, you will see a very large number of rental assistants. So we kind of moved the general assistance before the holidays, and then we are moving rental assistance now. Um, as you can see in the um, the bottom of my supervisor's memo, we're still getting a call every 10 minutes. We have about 80, uh, 81 general assistants per, uh, packets picked up each month and 86. Um, picked up for rental assistance. Um, so we have quite a few that are coming through and we had a record number of assistance cases over the holidays um, come in. So we're in the process of moving through over 100 assistance applications during that time. So anyway, we, I expect to see a bump uh, in the assistance this next month. Uh, and I can get to the others in my memo during the officer's correspondence. But if you have any questions about the town bills, I'm happy to take them now. Any questions? Okay, seeing none and let the record show that council members Wu, Roberts and Brown have joined. Actually town board members Wu, Roberts and Brown have joined. Mm -hmm. Great, so um, is there a uh, motion to um, approve the town fund and general assistance fund? Motion to approve uh, both funds. I'll okay. second. Moved by Jared, seconded by Mary Alice. Any yes. further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Wu? Yes. Mr. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Hersey? Yes. Mr. Brown? 
Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Colebrook? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. That motion passes. Okay, reports of officers. Um, so I'll get to the financial report in a moment, but um, let me just move through a couple of other things in the supervisor's memo um, for your information. So we are working on solidifying our emergency shelter, which we started under COVID. Um, and it really has um, turned into a really essential resource as we have been messaging for a number of years. We have no same day shelter for women and children uh, in the community and, or for parents and children. And so what we did under COVID is to launch a, a shelter program um, we have up to four rooms that are available. Right now we have two families in those rooms. Um, uh, they do have to be with children. Um, otherwise we are referring people to the, to the men's shelter and the women's shelter. Um, we also have an agreement with you at home that somebody who has symptoms um, and is not able to segregate, but they do not qualify for CU public health quarantine. Um, so you have to have a kind of a positive case. So if they're suspected positive, our township is is paying for the hotel rooms um, for those uh, homeless individuals. Um, we're going to get the bill from CU at Home this next month. So you'll see that shortly. I'm anticipating it'll be about between three hundred and thirty-three hundred dollars, three thousand, excuse me, three thousand thirty-three hundred dollars um, for the last quarter. So I'm glad we were able to provide that assistance and support. Um, I recently um, spoke with the shelter and uh, they have had five COVID cases, which is a, a frankly, although that sounds terrifying, that's amazing. That's a really good rate of transmission for a community our size where we have 50 men and 10 women almost every night in shelters. So I think that is um, good news and the township has played an essential role in helping to quarantine folks um, who have symptoms. Um, we are working very closely with the school district and crisis nursery. The referrals for our shelter will come through those two lines. We've um, actually trained all the social workers at the school district in how to make referrals and um, they are thrilled that they have an option to send families. Um, I'm going to be bringing an intergovernmental agreement to you here shortly. So they are um, bringing it to the school board next Tuesday and then I will bring it to you to sign. And essentially it just explains kind of what we've agreed to in terms of the referral process from the school district to us. But that'll be a very important tool as um, the school district has not had something for over a year and a half that is a reliable place to send families. Um, we also uh, have continued to do other forms of assistance. So although our rental assistance, our standard assistance program is down, um, we've done quite a bit of um, assistance for folks who are on our general assistance rolls to move into housing. We continue to pay off water bills for residents who have been disconnected. I'm also ref serving, referring them to Salvation Army for future support. So it's, um, I would say we get a call about a week of somebody in Urbana who has lost their water connection. And we do immediate turn ons after some complaining to the water company that's gone from three days to get the water turned back on to 24 hours. So we're happy with that. Um, and then we basically provide people uh, money to purchase water at the store so that they have something to clean with during that 24 hours. It's not an ideal situation, but um, I'm happy to report that the Unitarian Church has stepped forward and over the holidays they made the township their um, re recipient of all of the, the funds that came in for their community support programs. And so um, we've received over a $7,000 check. We intend to, it looks like we'll receive several thousand dollars more. And that will be utility funds actually for the community as a whole. And it's to fill the gaps. So I just met with our utility partners today. So if someone is covered by a lie heap, if they're covered by Salvation Army H2O program, um, or if the schools can help them with um, internet, then we will refer them and support them in that process, help them fill out the application. 
Um, if for some reason they fall through the cracks, whether it's due to their documented status, they have an act that's actively off, they've already hit their limits, we've been, so we will be supporting them with that fund. So I'm very happy to report that we have that available. Um, I also met with our rental assistance partners today and um, we're really looking to continue to streamline and make kind of one county program for rent and utility. Um, so I'll have more uh, reports on that soon, but we've been hatching a plan to kind of continue to make it easy for people to reach out to kind of one location or to have one application process to um, receive assistance. Um, we are expecting, you know, the next wave. Um, we're already seeing that at Township and we heard that on the phone today with our partners that, um, you know, people, there's quite a few folks who are two, three, four months behind in rent and uh, we, you know, we are hearing that, uh, I know the city also received kind of a deluge over the holidays. So stay tuned, um, buckle your seatbelts, and we will uh, continue to provide support to, to all the residents of Urbana um, who come to us in need um, or refer them appropriately. We continue to do housing advocacy. It's been very successful. We have a partnership with Housing Authority to help people who are literally homeless for longer than two weeks um, access a subsidy, excuse me, a housing voucher um, through the C-19 program. That is something that the Housing Authority opened up after a request from the homeless service providers when COVID first hit. So that program has been very successful. Um, today, we uh, launched, did a soft launch with our partners, our new rapid rehousing program that will be providing up to 12 months of rental assistance for literally homeless individuals and families in the community as referred through centralized intake for the homeless. So they have to go through that kind of screening process. It'll be uh, especially for folks who have been in the shelters um, they'll be able to access um, our, our rapid rehousing. And those are state dollars, um, emergency solutions grant uh, under the COVID program. But we do intend to continue that program into the future. And we got good feedback from our partners who run rapid rehousing programs. Um, what are the best practices to make that the most successful? Um, we got two participants approved for SSI payments in December. It used to be that we get one every four months and now we're really getting one to two folks every month. That is huge. And you'll see that in the financial report that uh, we've already made, met our budget in terms of the income for social security. We have fed a whopping 2,704 residents with our bucket brigade. That includes 1,034 children. That is a partnership with the Channing Murray Foundation. Uh, we were able to do holiday meals for 31 general assistant participant households and their families. So we actually did 48 meals to 31 households. They were all delivered December 24th. And I have to say one of the things that people loved the most is that they, just like everybody else, they got to call Piatos and look through the menu and pick which of the four desserts they got. And um, it was really great benefit. And we have submitted that um, that, that food support to uh, for Cure uh, Act reimbursement. So I'm glad we were able to provide a uh, warm and huge meal from Piatos uh, and to support our local business and also to um, get food into uh, the households of our general participant families. Um, so I will uh, stop there in terms of the um, report. And before going into the mid-year financial report, I just want to give Wayne an opportunity if there's any programmatic things he would like to update you all on first. I'll keep it short. Uh, we, the assessor's office should be completing the move into Lincoln Square Mall this week. Uh, we are moving hurriedly with that. And that's it. Thank you. Um, we did a deep cleaning of our office. I think it's the first one that we've been able to do since I started and that was very welcome. <laughs> much cleaner office than it was before the weekend. Um, so in terms of the financial report, what I sent you, and I keep trying to find the best way to provide this information to you. So feedback is certainly welcome. Uh, we wanted to show you our mid-year report. It's basically a spreadsheet that looks at the two town funds and then the funds together. Any place where there was a significant variance, I've put a, a note in it. Um, you know, we're 
everyone's down in terms of their interest in income. I've mentioned that the SSI reimbursements, we basically have exceeded our budget. Um, so we're hoping to actually double our budget by the end of the year. That will pay for that um, advocate position, which is great. Um, we do have uh, angel donor donations. We're at about 30,000 for the year to date. Um, it says 17.6 there because we are still working on the uh, plug in with uh, pay between PayPal and QuickBooks, but we'll be able to pull that stuff, uh, the PayPal in automatically here shortly. So I just added that so you would be aware our income and expenses have been pretty even with angel donations. Um, we uh, got, uh, we've been approved actually for, what did I put? It's a hundred and, <clears throat> it's a hundred and, $108,518 in cure expenses. We expect that to go to 204. We've actually asked for another 100 and uh, we have actual expenses that we've uploaded into the portal, totaling almost 160,000 in additional expenses. Uh, word on the street is that there will be additional reimbursements. We're very excited about that. Um, that's going to make a big difference in terms of the, the bottom line at the end of the year. It will mean that we can basically recycle our assistance dollars again into the community. So we're very grateful for that. It also covers the fact that I needed to um, increase the staff this fall uh, in terms of their hours. Um, and I did bring in two new staff members, both of whom actually three, one who's temporary, uh, and then the other two are funded through their programs. So um, you will see that uh, the you will see an increase in salary, so we should be at about 50% because we're 50% through the year. The increase in salaries others is entirely under general assistance, uh, and I had to increase case manager hours to handle workload. In fact, I, I think we're, we're still struggling with the hours we have, but I have two full-time interns coming from School of Social Work next week, um, and then I have our, our internship program restarts um, this week and next week, so I'll have about eight uh, interns on top of that. So um, you'll see the admin services. I just wanted to show the assessor aerial photos is in the admin services. That's why we're over to the extent that we are. The audit is complete, so we don't expect additional dollars there. Um, and then uh, we definitely have had increased office supplies. Some of that is front loading with Cure uh, and COVID safety supplies. I bought basically another uh, four to five months of COVID masks um, for our staff. Um, our staff are in the office. They do wear masks. They're six feet apart. And um, it's very important that we have all the safety supplies in place for them to remain safe. We've had no outbreaks in the office, knock on wood. We've been very careful. Um, we did purchase a security and video communication system. Again, Cure Reimbursable. I, I think this is a long time in the coming, but we had more issues this year than we have had in the past with security and uh, with fewer people in the office at times i wanted to make sure that that was available so we now have basically recording video recording of movement around the building 360 um and have not had that in the past uh and we have two-way video communication uh so that we are able to communicate with folks safely and we can limit that kind of interaction um, we will be able to buzz people into the lobby so that uh, as it gets colder and colder, they can come into a portion of the lobby section and have a conversation with us. We paid for one year of rent up front, so you'll see that as a new line item. Um, and then we did do a significant reduction in utilities. We did an energy efficiency install. It was very affordable due to the, um, to the Ameren incentives. Um, and then we have the um, the new two new programs, Utility Assistance and Bridge to Home. We have paid nothing in MTD passes. It's been free under COVID. I would strongly encourage you to reach out to your MTD board member contacts and please ask them to continue to allow for bus passes for free. That would be a great benefit to our community going forward and certainly has helped um, our participants uh, not to have to kind of jump through hoops to uh, purchase and stay up to date with their bus passes so they can move around the community. You will see we did a significant budget increase for personal allowances this year um, and we are on budget so I, we expected to go up and we did. Um, I am trying considering at this point we include we upped the general assistance amount last year after many years of it being flat and so I'll be looking with the new year at doing more of a cost of living increase. Um, 
but that we're on budget with that piece. The rental assistance is under budget um, and uh, we're working to expand that program. Um, we do wanna use those dollars. We know people need them and I have already changed the rules to allow for two months of rent um, rather than capping at $600. And um, we're working closely with the city to, in case there's additional amounts needed that we could work together on that. Uh, and, and we have a significant, the event expenses where some of the food programs have gone as well as the angel donor expenses. And you'll see the angel donor, although we're over budget, we're way over budget in income as well. So the income and expenses pretty nicely equals each other uh, in that piece. We're running just under budget overall. Again, we did plan on doing deficit spending, um, but I am pleased that we were pretty good at predicting what we'd be spending at this point. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions? Bill Brown and then Mary Alice. Yeah, um, Danielle, I know last time the stimulus checks came out, you helped people file for them if they, if they weren't, um, if they hadn't filed the taxes the year before, if they didn't have the right information with the IRS. Hopefully some of that will carry over this time and you won't have to do as much with people, but um, have you checked in on that? And are, are people that uh, you helped last year getting their checks and do you plan to continue to help them now? Yeah, what's interesting is once we build the build the infrastructure to help people apply for their um, checks and get them, we just continued that case management. Um, so I had both an intern and a specific case manager who was supporting people through that process. And we do we've had regular inquiries throughout um, all of our general assistance participants. We've been supporting them in getting those assistance payments. That doesn't mean they all got them. Um, it was a co somewhat complicated situation but um yeah so that assistance has actually remained throughout this entire time and we will continue to provide it um it we also just to be clear if somebody gets a one-time assistance payment like that it does not count towards their general assistance so we've been really you know messaging that and helping people access that um and it's yeah it's just been it should be more money but it has been a lifesaver for what it's been so okay great thanks Mary Alice. Um, thank you, Danielle, for this report. I'm really happy to see that we're pretty much spot on in terms of what we expected, uh, given that it's been such a roller coaster of a year, I'll call it that. Um, so I noticed that you have uh, the Cure Act in here in some of them. Um, so you have in miscellaneous income, you also have it in, um, in the MTD bus program. Actually, that's not Cure, sorry. Uh, the food support reimbursement. Are there any other items in the expenses that you had mentioned, I think, increased staff? Um, so I'm just wondering if you could fill out like roughly how much money we were um, asking for reimbursement in the Cures Act for these different categories? Absolutely. So, okay. so we have been approved for $204,000. And the way the program works is that they have strongly recommended that we um, request reimbursement for staffing first. I think it's been easier for them to process those requests fast. So we honored that and put forward the staffing request first. Um, and it appears we'll, we'll receive that. Um, since so much of Township's time has been diverted to COVID expense, it was not difficult to show that some of our programs like community work program totally on hold. Um, general assistance, a significant increase due to, to COVID. So. Um, and then almost all of our rental assistance has been COVID rental assistance rather than regular. So that all we documented well. And, um, you know, I, I, I actually think 204 is just the beginning. I think we will get another disbursement of dollars. So I would say when the dollars come back, we're gonna show it as income, but the categories that it comes to are pretty exclusively staffing, uh, equipment, so our technology of uh, uh, security and a two-way communication system, some of the office supplies, which um, has included the PPE. And then we were able to, it was difficult, um, but we were able to learn the ropes on applying for rental assistance reimbursement. Now we have not been reimbursed for the rental assistance yet, um, but we processed all of that and uploaded it. Um, and we're hoping to receive reimbursement um, we have received significant reimbursement for food. That was one of the listed priority categories for CURE. So 
Um, what's so great is that a lot of what we spend our angel donor funds on, we're receiving reimbursement on, which, with, and since we're out of angel donor funds, um, we can basically start to use them again to support people's food needs. So I think that that replenishes that supply. We do have donations still coming in, um, of both coats and dollars. And so we're hoping that we'll have enough to you know, make it through the spring. Otherwise, without those cure funding and, and uh, the same level of donations, we, you know, we would have run out of steam. At that point, I think what we would have looked at is how can we re reallocate dollars? Because frankly, the food support piece has just been, um, we've just gotten a lot of feedback that it's been very essential um, uh, to help folks with families and people with disabilities be able to stay at home and, and receive that food support. Dennis? Um, yes, Danielle, uh, would you review uh, what the current general assistance funding is for individuals um, and what you think it might rise to if we do increase mm -hmm. it next year a little bit? Yeah, so um, we currently pay $300 per person per month. Um, unless they have income over 600, we, in theory, we would do partial payments, but we don't have people in that category. So it's basically been a flat grant of, of $300 a month. For families, we provide three months of assistance and support getting on TANF. So they really are eligible for that other cash assistance, which is more than 300. So those tend to be temporary general assistance cases. Um, I am, I've been uh, speaking with Carol Elliott, the former supervisor, and I actually cleaned out the basement in the, in, you know, some people clean with their anxiety. So that's what I, I did is I went through the old historic archives um, uh, to, you know, as, as my therapy. And I found documents going back to the 1940s. And I've actually been reading through the general assistance rules and roles and um, seeing the, and I also um, have been going back to kind of the framework of other townships and they do provide different levels of assistance for families. Um, you know, if you have additional people in the household. So in looking at expansion of general assistance, and this will be in the strategic plan that we have a, we have a draft of now. It's very, very rough, but I'm hoping to bring you a more final draft so we could look at it. I'd really like your input as the town board on our kind of five-year strategic plan. But in that, I, I talk about um, kind of making the general assistance participate, excuse me, uh, looking at the general assistance allocation uh, based more on um, family size. Um, and so that may be a place where we can expand. The other thing I really, that really sits with me is that general assistance um, doesn't pay for someone's housing and it used to, but it's close. Right. And so people who are actively homeless, is there a way to basically, do, instead of paying cash payments, could we do housing support payments? Wow. Um, so I'm just, I, this, I'm just trying to get creative to address those needs of folks where um, we could, we're, you know, we're not far from a housing subsidy. Um, homestead SRO units are $400 a month and our general assistance payments are 300, right? Although those are subsidized through the housing authority, just to give you a sense, like the very, very cheapest efficiency unit is 400. Mm -hmm. um, and is there a way that we could get to a place where we could support um, those handful of participants right now, it's about 40, 45, who are homeless to actually have housing using general assistance payments. So this is for, uh, you know, for our conversation talking about the strategic plan, but I just want to plant the seed that I think that we can get creative in terms of meeting people's basic needs. That is pretty basic. <laughs> Housing, yes. Shelter. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sharice. Um, Danielle, in your research that you, you managed to do, like from the 40s, comparing it to now, back then, was there um, the the homeless kind of homeless numbers that we're dealing with now or, or? I can actually, you know, I have numbers going back to, I think the sixties. Um, and I have provided that I think in the budget document, but I, it's in our strategic plan. It actually shows uh, we have data 
um, in terms of number of cases, but also dollars spent. Of course, we have inflation, right? But we can look and see a dollar spent and number of cases. And the cases have really fluctuated up and down, and it has to do with the economy, but also the leadership. So um, we, uh, I will tell you that under my predecessor, where we were at 26 cases, we had, ne we had not been that low since the late 70s, right? So like, you know, it didn't, it was out of whack with what the trends had been over the course of that time. But the, I will, you will see that in the strategic plan, you'll actually see the, the changes. Some of the other interesting pieces is it used to be that we provided um, vendor voucher payments. So instead of cash payments, we would pay for a portion of food and a portion of housing. And it's very, very heavy administration because you had to have a budget for each person. So it really, um, you end up spending too much, on, so much money on the accounting side. But I think given that we now have, I'd really like to go to a card system where folks can actually um, use the funds off of their card and it might be limited to certain kinds of uses. Um, uh, I, you know, it does weigh on me when I know that we have participants with substance abuse cases. I do uh, mandate special service referrals where they have to um, seek substance abuse um, treatment to be on GA. The issue though is, you know, people are ready when they're ready. You can't force that situation. So I wish I had another tool that would basically, you know, limit what could be paid for out of those dollars while still providing the dollars rather than cutting off um, the general assistant participants. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out how technology can bring us some additional flexibility going forward. I will tell you though, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're definitely not at a at an all time high of general assistance. Um, and I find that somewhat surprising, but hopefully promising. Um, you know, we've definitely been up in the 190s. I, when I was on city council, it was 192. And that was, I think that was when we, um, you know, we had two uh, economic downturns during that time, 2003 and 2008. Okay, thank you. Mary Alice. Danielle, I just wanted to suggest, since you have all this archival stuff, that um, iSchool does have practicums where they have a whole semester um, archival where you could get a student who would be able to go through all that stuff and put it all together. So That's yeah. a great idea. I actually wanted to reach out to the library and the archive there um, because there's a lot of information about who the supervisors were and who the trustees were. And I'm sure people who are doing genealogical research on their families from this area um, would find that out to be of interest, um, but I hadn't thought of the high schools, so that's a good reference. I certainly don't have the time to pour through it. We need to move through these assistance items, but I did put it in a safe place, um, and uh, I organized it and put them in boxes and tried to, we were having a little bit of a, um, a humidity issue in the basement, so I was able to protect them from that. Any other questions? Okay. Um, none. We'll move on to unfinished business. There's none listed. New business. Don't have any. Uh, Wayne, did you have any last minute things to add? Check in one more time. I did not, but okay. I am interested in learning about that archival stuff Mary Alice was talking about. Okay, we'll get that information to you. All right, with no further business before the town board, this meeting is adjourned. And when the clerk gives us the sign, we'll move into the Urbana City Council meeting. Thank you. Thank you.